Welcome to our 10 minutes of Colab.org 3.1 release screencast. We will run you through some of the new features on our mycolab.com installation, since that is still virtually identical in features to what 3.1 has to offer. So you see Torsten Grote, our evangelist, is logging in for you into the web portal and you see the web mail, which many of you know and love um, and know as Roundcube as well. And here, this is his little picture. Um, you see by the side something new, by the way, which is the whole save to cloud button, because um, from here you could actually save all the attachments directly into your cloud without downloading them to a desktop. If you are composing an email, you could do the same reversely. Now you see we have all the standard modules, mail, address book, calendar. Here's the new file module, tasks, settings, and then of course the logout. We are only going to show you calendar and files today. The task module has also seen quite a bit of work, so I recommend you have a look at that yourself. So let's have a look at the calendar. Here you see um, him selecting a calendar and looking for the CalDAV URL because with CalDAV now he can synchronize this to a desktop or mobile phone of his choice, such as the Android emulator that he has prepared. So you will see it here. So all the events are synchronized over. He scrolls back and forth a little bit. You will see that in fact, um, all the events are there as one would expect. And now to show how to um, synchronize a new event, he creates one just by pulling open the time slot, add some data. You see he could also put in recurrences, participants have free busy handling their attachments, that kind of thing. He saves it. There it is since um, he created it too short for his taste. He um, simply edits it by dragging it out. He could also drag and drop it to another day. It's not yet there since that is not set to auto refresh. So he refreshes once manually. Magic happens and then the device has the event as one would expect. And those of you who have been using ActiveSync before will be happy to hear that in fact this also solves the um, only one calendar per server supported issue with Android, since um, you can have as many CalDAV calendars as you want. Now let's switch over to the files. Chlava is the file um, storage application. And you can see we already filled in a couple of files of different types. What this is really is it is a fully standalone capable application um, with different capabilities. I mean, it can obviously show and parse those files. Um, it also has viewing capabilities already built in. Some editing capabilities come with it as we ship it out of the box. Other capabilities can be added. Um, Torsten is just showing off some of the sorting features here um, and will in a second also show you some of the inline viewing in the browser. Um, starting, I believe, with a rather peculiar fetish of his, namely rabbits. Um, don't ask me. I, I can't tell. I, I promised not to. Anyhow, so you see big gigantic rabbit. Um, and of course, we can also look at PDFs. In this case, a flyer that we created a while back and um, is rather large, therefore it takes a moment to load, but um, then we have the full thing rendered in the browser. Um, the PDF viewer is actually fairly powerful. Many of you know it already from other applications that also make use of it, so not really a whole point in going too deeply into it. Um, we also can do things like um, ODF, um, now uh, let's have a look at that quickly. You have not yet editing capabilities for ODF in here, but um, we are of course planning to also update web ODF to the latest version to give the full collaborative editing thing. We just need to have a look at code quality and security issues first, and then we will add that as well. Now, this application comes with some pre-sorting, as you see, you can drop in files and it will find them according to their type. So you can just sort for videos, audio, images, um, documents. 
which makes life rather easy. You can see also that you can immediately play those um, videos out of um, the browser. In this case, his uh, bandwidth in the office seems slightly lacking, but um, that can happen occasionally. Um, however, you see it basically works as long as your bandwidth is there, which is what you would expect in a web application. You can also play sound, which I think he is going to open in a second, but of course that is only marginally useful since the only soundtrack here right now is me talking. Um, so therefore he's just going to do it, give it a quick click to show the player. Still a bit simplistic, but um, I'm sure someone will eventually have a look at this. I mean, obviously the focus for all of this is primarily the enterprise. And then lastly, let's have a look at some source code here. Um, this is just plain text effectively, but um, you see syntax highlighting. And um, now that we have looked at this file here, he's gonna show off something that is actually extremely important to understand is that this application can function standalone. And you will see here that it has a rather different look and feel because this is the um, Colab Web Admin look and feel. And so it is skinned over this same application effectively, and which means you can import this into your web application as well, including its dialogues such as save to cloud or get from cloud. Um, all of this can be skinned, integrated, imported, um, and deliberately so. So you can virtually use this as your file storage middleware into any web application that's by design. Um, here we have the same source code application and what he also wanted to show you is that you can in fact already edit this. It's not the most powerful editor in the world, but it is quite sufficient for plain text. And in case you actually have some code to edit, it already has some level of um, intelligence. So we put in a little hello collab here. We do not properly terminate the line and voila, we get the little error that tells us there's a syntax error. Um, so we see that it has some syntax um, checking in there. Of course, I would not necessarily recommend to make this your main productivity application, but nonetheless, it's quite useful to have around. In terms of where do those files live? Of course, this is all Colab and this is all on mycolab.com, which means it is all stored in IMAP as a backend but that is not necessarily so. The entire application is set up as a framework where it is extremely easy to add other backends. So you could hook this up to any file store of your choice. Um, IMAP's good for us since it has some um, very nice ACLs. It has, can be scaled very well. Um, it's rather robust and you can do this fairly secure. So all of that is good. Um, and if you store things directly in binary, you also don't have loss through base 64 encoding. Um, so let's now go back into the uh, uh, yes, let's go back into the uh, round cube and just for show and to prove that all of this is real, um, as if I couldn't manipulate this on the video editor, um, see that uh, we have the hello call up here as well. So there you have it. Um, and in case you don't only want to live in the web client, which by the way here also shows you the quota very nicely and that is quota across all objects um, since all is in IMAP. You can also hook this up through WebDAV to your local desktop client or to a mobile device. Um, there's various clients that support this, including synchronization to your client. Um, there is one called CyberDuck, which um, some of our employees on Mac and Windows are using. Um, so um, that is in fact a rather um, useful choice from Switzerland, I believe also from Bern actually, coincidentally. And um, so, but this is now Dolphin um, on Linux, so it's all good. Whatever you want, you can hook it in, make it a local file system. Here you have um, the file now in the web front end, so it is there. It's all hooked up um, and in fact, used in production by quite a few users on mycolab.com. Um, that's it for today. If you liked it, head over to colab.org, try it out.